why are we here? To seek the God who loves us. What do we hope to find? A welcoming friend, a gentle stranger, a place for our questions, and a home for our hopes. God be with you. Also with you. I invite you to be seated. And our scripture reading tonight comes from Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was uh, was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes, And that the tree was to be desired to make one wise. She took its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her. And he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not Again, in this Lenten season, we're focusing in on those questions, the questions that are in Scripture and the questions that we have about God and faith and life. And on Wednesdays, we're going to be looking at different types of questions and how questions function. That is to say that questions do something when they're asked. Like, yes, they're asking something, but also they're, they're doing something. And this week, we're going to talk about how questions can be used to divide us and how questions can bind us together. The questions that can keep relationships from even being started or bring them to an end, and the questions that can bring us closer to someone. Questions can be used to draw lines between us and others, to try and separate us into groups of us And then, questions sort of like those that we hear, whose side are you on? Or in the time of judges, some of the tribes went to one tribe and they would ask them to pronounce a word. Do you pronounce the word shibboleth or sibboleth? Or in Northern Ireland during the Troubles, do you call the city Derry or Londonderry? In an election year, who did you vote for? A question like, don't you love me? Question like, Longhorns or Aggies? (laughs) Sometimes questions can divide us and separate us into groups. Sometimes the questions that divide are obvious. Longhorns, Aggies, us, them, who? Sometimes the questions that divide are a little bit more difficult to notice, like the ones that the serpent asks in the text. They poke at our trust. They stoke our anxiety and our fear. Did God really say you can't? But... Questions can also bind us together. They can move us past divisions. They can bring us closer to one another. Like God's questions to Adam and Eve in the garden. Where are you? Who told you? Have you eaten the fruit from the tree? Ask 
not to accuse, but to draw us close again. Asked so as to remind them to listen to the voice of God who loves them and not the voice of the tempter. Asked to know how best to care for them and to understand what they have done and why. Questions can bind us together. Questions like, how are you? What brings you joy? How can I help you? What's one thing you wish everyone knew about you? Questions can divide and questions can bind. And tonight I'm going to invite you to practice asking questions that help us get to know one another better. Questions that bring us closer to each other. So you're going to have another opportunity and invitation to turn to someone in the room and ask a question. And the question, so you can turn to someone, um, it says, ideally, someone you know, at least a little bit, because we're talking about questions that are going to help bring us closer to those people that we know. So, so you're going to look around the room and find somebody you know. If you don't know that person, that's okay, but introduce yourself before you continue the conversation. And then ask them a question that will help you get to know them better. I'll give you my examples again if you're nervous about what question that is, but I want you to be creative too. A question that's just gonna help you get to know somebody better. Whatever that question is that will help you get to know them better. But it could be a question like, how are you? Or what brings you joy? Or is there something I can help you with? Or what do you wish someone knew about you? Um, a question like, what's the favorite place you've ever been to? Um, what's your favorite food, right? It could be very simple. It can be very deep, but a question that's going to help you get to know someone more. So I invite you to find somebody else in the room and ask them a question that will help you get to know them better. Let's practice. I hope that you have learned something new, that you have learned what questions you can ask to help get to know someone better. Uh, and because, you know, Lent is a season where not everything has to be fun, I'm giving you homework, okay? So the, the homework this week is think about someone you know who isn't in this room or maybe perhaps um, isn't even part of our community at Christ Lutheran Church, doesn't worship with us. And the next time you see them, ask them a question that will help you get to know them better. Do what we just practiced together tonight. That's your homework.